morning, everybody. How are you doing today? Good, good. All right. As we begin, I want everyone to look closely and pay attention to my suit. Okay, look at this. Isn't this nice, huh? Right? Thank you, thank you. So this, this suit actually was a, a birthday gift um, from some friends of mine, some brothers and sisters in this church, and uh, they wanted to buy me for my birthday last year, and so uh, for all of you, you know who you are, thank you. I actually don't know who everyone is because some of, some, some of the people that pitched in wanted to stay anonymous, so I don't even know who everyone is that helped out, but thank you all. And uh, so it was quite a surprise, it was quite a blessing for me that they, you know, wanted to buy me a suit like this, and, uh, you know, they took me to Moore's, and they um, kind of surprised me with that, and, and then we had, uh, um, you know, they, they bought me the suit and everything, they helped me pick it out, I just, all I did was stand there and just, you know, try this on, try that on, whatever, right, so I didn't have to choose anything, just, just put on whatever they said, and in the end, they found a suit that looked good on me, and I thought it looked good, so, you know, <laughs> praise God, right? Yeah. And it was, you know, it was really such a blessing, but what blessed me more than them buying me, a, you know, the suit was the words that they said. And uh, what they told me, the reason they wanted to buy me a suit, I mean, they could have bought me anything. They could have bought me, like, a big screen TV. They could have bought me a new vehicle. You know, they could have bought me anything. But the reason they wanted to buy me a suit was because they could see the calling that God had on my life. And they said they just believed that God was going to use me in such a powerful way, and they just... They felt like they had to, you know, like, they wanted me to look good. They wanted me to have a nice suit to wear while I was preaching, while I was doing different things. They, they said, I, you know, they really just felt this was important, and so they, so they wanted to bless me with it. But the word, just the fact that they, they believed so strongly in the calling that God placed on my life and that God was going to use me in that calling, that they, were, they had to move, they had to act, they had to do something about it. They, had, they saw a lack. They said, he doesn't have a nice suit. We need to get him a nice suit, you know. God wants me to look good. Amen. So those, those words, that, that just blessed me. That encouraged me far beyond just the act of them buying the suit. It was the words they spoke really blessed me the most, you know. Um, and, you know, really, it's, it's one of the most encouraging things I've ever heard in my life, that, that they would believe me that strongly. They would actually buy me a suit. And I'm sure if I would ask all of you, uh, you know, how many times in your life have you, have you heard such encouragement, such, had felt so, so motivated, so blessed by somebody? You know, unfortunately, it, it probably doesn't happen very often. We probably can't think of that many experiences in our life where we just felt so blessed or so encouraged by someone uh, in the way that I did. I know for me, this is probably one of the most, definitely one of the most encouraging things I've ever heard. But, you know, I want to tell you today, <clears throat> you know, God believes in you. Every single one of us here, God believes in all of us. And you know, often we, we, think about, we don't think about that. We think that we believe in God. We believe in the power of God. We, we you know, apply our faith and we think that God's going to move, God's going to do this. And we think that God, you know, we, we believe in Him. And we're always, we're taught this often that, you know, our faith in God and, God and we believe in God. But God believes in us. God is a God of faith. He has faith in us. He has created every single person on earth today and everyone here in this room, everyone watching by live stream or watching it online later, every single person has a, has a very specific plan and purpose for their life that God has created for them. Everyone, every single person. Uh, if you want to look with me at Jeremiah chapter 1 and verse 5, This is God speaking to Jeremiah, and he says, he's saying to him, Before I formed you in the belly, in the womb, I knew you, and before you were born, I consecrated you, I appointed you a prophet to the nations. God is speaking to, the, to Jeremiah and says, Before you were conceived in the womb, I knew who you were. And before you were born, he said, I had called you to be a prophet. Now, often when we read a scripture like this, and especially because it's in the Old Testament, we think that's the Old Covenant, so it's nothing, you know, but we read this and we think, well, that's just, you know, the history. That's just what happened thousands of years ago. Or we think something like, you know, deep down we think, well, that's great for Jeremiah, but what does that have to do with me? 
that's just, this is something that just happened thousands of years ago and doesn't really apply to my life. But I want to tell you that, you know, God wrote the Bible not as a history book, but he wrote the Bible with you in mind, with me in mind, with all of us in mind, and he wants to sh tell us these things. He wants to share these things with us. And so when we read a passage like this, and even though God is speaking to Jeremiah, we can put our own name in there, and we could say, as if God was speaking to me, Peter, and God's saying, Peter, before I formed you in the belly, I knew you. Before you came out of the womb, I consecrated you. We can put our own name in there and take it as God is speaking directly to us. That God is speaking to us and saying, this is the truth for you. God knew all of us before we were born, and he gave us a plan and a purpose before we were born, before we were even conceived. In Psalm 139, you know, the psalmist says pretty much the same thing. He says, before, before I was even born, God, you wrote, down, you wrote down my plan and purpose in a book. You wrote it down in a book before I was even born. It's basically the saying the same thing there. Um, another scriptural example, 1 Samuel chapter 13. 1 Samuel chapter 13 and in verse 14. This is, now this is uh, the prophet Samuel talking to King Saul. But he's, he's talking about the future King David to come. So it's, it's a prophet Samuel talking to King Saul. He's talk, and he's talking about King David. And so he says, But now thy kingdom shall not continue, for the Lord hath sought him a man after his own heart, and the Lord hath commanded him to be captain over his people, because thou hast not kept that which the Lord commanded you. So here, I want to focus on that middle section there. The Lord hath sought him a man after his own heart. As referring to King David. Samuel is telling Saul that, that the Lord hath sought him a man, referring to King David, after his own heart, and has commanded him to be captain over his people. You know what's interesting about this verse? This was written eight years before King David was even born. Eight years before he was born, Samuel is saying that, that God has sought him a man after his own heart. That shows that God knew him intimately, personally, the character he would have, the, the, the personality he would have before he was born. God knew it. And more than that, not only did he know him, he spoke to him and commanded him to be a captain over the people. God gave him a plan, a purpose, a destiny long before he was even born. If I think of my own life, eight years before I was born, I have, I have three older siblings. Eight years before I was born, that was like four years before my parents were even married. I don't think my parents even knew each other for, you know, eight years before I was born. They probably hadn't even met yet. And they were married four years before I was born, and then I have three older siblings. So there's no way my parents would have known or thought that I was coming. They, they, it wasn't even like anywhere in their thoughts, in their imagination, and whatever. And yet God knew. God knew. He, he sought me out. He spoke to me. He gave me a very specific plan and purpose for my life. And I want to tell you that God has done the same thing for everyone here. For every single one of you here, God has a plan, a purpose, a calling, a destiny for your life. Anyone watching online, this, this is true for all of us. Now, you might look at these scriptures, and you might look at Jeremiah, and you might look at, you know, and God said he was called to be a prophet. You might see David and say, well, he was called to be a king. Or you might look at me and say, well, God, you know, God's called you to, to teach the word. So you might look at, at that and say, well, that's, that's only for, you know, God only has a calling for people who, who serve in ministry. You know, like Ephesians talk about the fivefold ministry, apostle, prophet, evangelist, preacher, teacher. So you would say, well, that's only, that only applies to people who are actually in ministry. That doesn't apply to, that's not a, that doesn't apply to me. So often we, we try to exclude ourselves in this way. Well, that's only for people who have, you know, if you're going to be in ministry, if you're going to be a, a missionary somewhere, if you're, going to have a, if you're going to be a pastor of a church, if you're going to be, a, you know, on a TV or radio uh, minister or something like that. But just for the average person, a lot of people, you would say that, no, no, that, doesn't, that is not true. That's only for those who have a real, you know, like powerful calling or a powerful destiny, they would say. But that, not just for the average person, we often think. It doesn't apply to the, to the average person. You know, that's kind of the same as saying, you know, I was never very good. Well, I mean, I was, but if, if just uh, in general, if someone, if someone would say, I'm not very good at math or science, 
And so, you know, I'll never be a doctor. Therefore, I can't do anything with my life. Because I can't be a doctor, you know, I don't have the, I don't have the skill set, I don't have that ability. You know, I just, I just can't do anything with my life. It's kind of the same thing. as you know, but, but we don't realize that God doesn't just call people into the ministry. God has a calling for just innumerable amount of things. I was talking to Pastor Paul a couple weeks ago, and he was sharing with me that in this church right now, there are over 100 volunteers in this church. Not, every, not all of them, you know, are, are volunteering every Sunday, but over 100 volunteers in this church. Yet, how many people do you see on stage here? One. Just me. Normally just Pastor Paul. But yet, if it wasn't for all 100 of the volunteers that come here and they give their time and they do what, what God has asked them to do every Sunday, what kind of effect would one person on this stage have? A very minimal effect. All I have to do is turn off my microphone and then you wouldn't, like very few of you would be able to hear me. If we didn't have Umberto on the soundboard every Sunday, very few of you here would be able to hear me. If we didn't have such an awesome worship team up here every Sunday, we would, you know, most people coming in, they'd be just focusing on the things that happened last week, all the troubles that they encountered, all the problems they have at work. They'd be thinking on the next week up ahead. We wouldn't, they wouldn't be able to come out of that place of, of focusing on the world and focusing their attention on Jesus, on the Lord, and what God has done for them. The worship is such a powerful, powerful tool to take our minds off ourselves and focus on God. So we need the worship team here. We have people on cameras. We have uh, Kristen's on projection today. You know, if it wasn't for her, you wouldn't see the scriptures up on the screen behind me. You'd be flipping through your Bibles on your smartphones. What did he say again? What was verse was that? Where, what was that? Where is it turning to? And you'd hear all like, the, the flipping of the pages and you wouldn't even hear what I'm saying. We have people in, we have people at greeters. We have ushers. We have people in the nursery down in, in Sunday school. We have people doing hospitality. It takes over 100 people to be here so that one person can be on the stage speaking. To me, that says that out of 100 people, one might be called to, be a, to speak, to be a preacher or a teacher or an evangelist, a missionary, something like that. But the other 100 play just as important of a role. They have a part to play. Everyone has a part to play. It's not, God doesn't just call people to be a preacher or an evangelist or a missionary and, and you have to go overseas to some, you know, to Africa. Everyone always talks about going to Africa and living in a grass hut. God doesn't just call people to do these kinds of things, you know. God needs people everywhere. Look with, uh, turn with me to Exodus 35. I want to give you an example here. Exodus 35, and we're going to start at verse 30. We're going to read a few verses. So this is when the Israelites, they're, they're uh, traveling around the desert, and uh, God had given them the commandments and, and the law and everything, and, and uh, he wanted, he told Moses to build him a tabernacle, okay? And so he told Moses to build him a tabernacle, and this is what Moses said to the children of Israel. He said, and Moses says to the children of Israel, see, the Lord hath called by name Belzalel, he can pronounce it, I can't, the son of Uri, the son of her of the tribe of Judah. So now right here we have it saying, God has called this person by name and specifically said which family he's from, who his ancestry was, and what the tribe was. So we read this, we would say, this person's got to be important. God, for God to have called him by name, this has got to be someone truly important, someone who's going to be big. He's going to be big in the, in the children of Israel. He's going to be a very important, he's going to be some kind of prince or some leader. Maybe he's going to you know, be a... a uh, a leader in the church or like a, like a worship leader, something, someone important. This has to be someone important for God to have called him by name, right? So go to the next verse. It says, um, And God hath filled him with the Spirit of God in wisdom, in understanding, and in knowledge. And we're like, yep, see, God's got a calling on his life. God's got a purpose for him. He filled him with all these things. Wisdom, knowledge, Spirit of God. Yep, this has got to be someone big. And then it goes on to say, And in all manner of workmanship... You're kind of like, what? Workmanship? Let's go on to the next verse. And to devise curious works 
to work in gold and in silver and in brass. Next verse. And the cutting of stones to set them and the carving of wood to make any manner of cunning work. And we kind of stop here and we look at this and he says, what? This person works with stone, works with gold, works with brass. You know, he's, he's working with his hands. He's, he's a carpenter. He's a masonry. God called him by name, said he filled him with the Spirit of God, filled him with wisdom, filled him with knowledge, and he's a carpenter? Really? Brothers and sisters, God doesn't just need a pastor on a stage. He needs people all around. He has a calling, a plan, a purpose for everybody. If we keep reading in this section here, it, it, and it doesn't say that this was this person, this, this uh, Bilzalil, it doesn't say he was, you know, just some peasant. It doesn't say he was a, some nobody. It says multiple times in this, in this section here, it says he was a wise man. He was a wise man. He had, the, he had a wise heart. Multiple times it says Bilzalil was a wise man. Why? Because God had a calling on his life. God had a purpose for him. God had gifted him with the ability to work in brass and silver and gold and to work with wood and to make all these things because God needed a tabernacle built. And so he called someone to build that tabernacle. And so he gave him these abilities. We have, if we think about, you know, even in this church, there's a, there's a brother, many of you probably have seen him. He's been, over the last, I think, year, he's been... Um, doing some repairs, he's been doing renovations, he's been fixing, he's been painting, he's been doing all kinds of things. And if we think about what would happen to this church, what would happen to this building if we didn't have somebody called of God to be a carpenter, to work with, to work with wood and, and tape, tapestries and cloths and different things. You know, uh, just not too long ago, we got a new stage built here. Yeah. He, he built a new stage for us, right? Praise God, we have an awesome new stage. We, you know, if we, didn't, if we didn't have someone with that kind of a calling on their life, this building would slowly just decay, fall apart. We would see just, you know, like things falling out, lights burning out, things falling down. It would get worse and worse and worse. God needs people to repair. God needs people who know how to work with wood and to make the benches that we're all sitting on when we come to church on Sunday. God needs people who know how to do, like, electricians and plumbers and how to wire these things so that we can have lighting in the church, that we can have toilets to use when we, when we go to the bathroom. Like, we, God needs people to do all these things. It's not just someone on a stage preaching the Word of God. So right now, you might be thinking, you might be thinking to yourself, well, okay, so if what you're saying is true... What am I called to do? I mean, if you're saying that God has a very specific plan and purpose and, and mission for everybody on earth, then, then what's mine? Right? It's a very fair question. I had to ask myself that same thing. I didn't know what mine was just a few years ago before I uh, came to Toronto and came to Bible college and, and uh, God slowly revealed it to me what my plan, my purpose was. You know, it's a fair question, right? Well, I don't know. I don't know what your, what your calling is. I don't know what your, your specific plan or purpose in life is. It's, it's not for me to know. It's for you to know. I can't, I can't tell you. I can't come up to you unless God gives me a direct word of knowledge and, and, and says, you know, that brother Alex is called to be so-and-so. I don't know what your calling is. I can't just come to you and say, oh, God, God, you know, I'm feeling that God says, you know, you're going to be, you're supposed to be, um, um, uh, you're going to be an accountant. Yes, you're an accountant, you know. No, no, you know, I, that's, not, that's not of God, right? God, God has to speak this to you. God has to speak it to you. And you remember, so in the beginning I said that God believes in you, right? God, in the same way that these people in the church, they looked at me, and they saw a lack in my life. You, you thought this suit wasn't connected to the sermon, but it is. In the same way they looked at, at my life and they, they saw a lack, they saw he doesn't have a nice suit. We need to do something about it. God's, God knew all of us long before we were born. And he said, you know, there's a lack in their life. They have sin. There's sin blocking them from me. I need to do something about that. I need to do something about this. 
Because they have this lack, and they can't, there's no way that they can do it on their own. I, you know, I need to do something with this so that they can have, so they can start to, you know, hear my voice and they have a relationship with me. So in the same way the people of the church, you know, they came together and they, and they wanted to give me a suit. God gave his son Jesus to die for all of us to remove that sin that was blocking our relationship with God. And now, because of Jesus, we can have relationship with God. We can hear God's voice. We can know him intimately and personally because of Jesus. We can do it on our own. But you know, and why did God do it? Because he believed in you. He knew the calling, the plan, the purpose that he had put on your life. And he wants you to fulfill because he knows that's what's going to bring you satisfaction. That's what's going to bring you happiness in life. That's what's going to make you just wake up in the morning excited about the day when you are living in your calling, in your plan and purpose. God, that's what God wants for you. He wants you blessed in life. So he said, I need to do something for them. I need to do something about this. Because if without, without, with this sin in the way, they will never receive. They can't, they can't get there. So he gave his son. He gave his son to die for all of us so that we can have relationship. But, you know, he didn't stop there. He didn't stop there. In the same way that the, my friends and the people of this church that wanted to buy me the suit, in the same way that they didn't just come to me and say, Peter, you know, here's a gift card. Go to Moore's. Get yourself a suit. We want to buy you a suit. In the same way they didn't just come and, and give me a gift card or, or just, you know, tell the store ahead of time that, that uh, we're going to send our friend here. His name is Peter Becker. We want to, you know, we want to buy him a suit. So just, you know, let him pick out whatever he wants and then just charge it. You know, here's my credit card. Charge it to my card. You know, no, they didn't do that. They didn't, they didn't just say, here's the money. Go do it yourself. No, they came, they came with me. They brought me there. They came with me. I had a group of people standing around me. I don't know if you've ever been in a situation like that, but that's an experience. I mean, I had, you know, men, women of all ages sitting there, you know, touching me, checking my pants, you know, like, it's, it's an experience, I tell you. I, at, at one point, I was kind of like, I don't think there's even any, any reason for me to go to the change room anymore. I might as well just change right here. I mean, there's not much left, you know, that they haven't already touched in that way, so... But it's an experience, I tell you. I mean, that was something different. But, uh, but you know, they, they believe, like, again, they didn't just, they didn't just, like, just here's the money, go do it. No, they, they did it for me. They went, they selected the suit. All I had to do was try it on. That's all I did. And they're, they're the ones, they gauged, they looked at me, they said, you know, this is, and they discussed among themselves, and, you know, I don't like this, I don't like that, we should, you know, whatever. And they, and they selected it for me. You know, all I had to do was try it on. It wasn't my work. So in the same way, they didn't just stop at, you know, at just giving me the money. God didn't just stop at giving you Jesus. God gave the Holy Spirit. He sent the Holy Spirit to indwell among all of us, to be in all of us. Because that's how, because the Holy Spirit, in John chapter 14, the Holy Spirit is the one who's going to teach you all things. He's the one who's going to show you what your calling is, what your purpose in life is, why you are here. Your parents might have not known you were coming. Your parents might have, again, eight years before I was born, my parents didn't know I was coming, but God knew. And the same way your parents might not have known you were coming until nine months before you were born. God knew you were coming long before you were born. And God, and God had a plan and purpose for you. And only the Holy Spirit can show you what that plan, what that purpose for your life is. And that's the amazing thing. When we have the Holy Spirit in our life, when we're operating through the power of the Holy Spirit, when we're letting the Holy Spirit work through us, we don't have to do anything. All we have to do is put them on and look good. Right? That's all we have to do. We have to just stand there, have our suit, you know, kind of give them one of these, you know, and just kind of be like... And let the Holy Spirit do the work. That's what the Holy Spirit wants to do. The Holy Spirit wants to do the work for you. You're not supposed to be doing the work. You're not supposed to be the one struggling and laboring and, and putting in all this effort and getting stressed out and overwhelmed. No, it's the Holy Spirit that wants to flow through you. I know for myself, I mean, if I, if I didn't have the Holy Spirit, I mean, I could, you know, I went to a Bible college, but I could go to... Uh, you know, a seminary, and I could get my doctorate in theology, and I could take classes on public speaking, and I could take classes on presentation, and I could take, you know, just study for years and years and years, and, and get all kinds of doctorates, and, and, you know, just have memorized the Word of God, and, and yet if I didn't have the Holy Spirit, I could come up here, and I could just give you the most awesome message in the world, just like the best written, the best presented, the best, and yet 
it wouldn't minister to you. It wouldn't do anything to you. It wouldn't touch your heart. It wouldn't, it wouldn't connect with you. You would hear these words. You'd be going, hmm. Yeah. Looking around. You know, you might, you might learn something. Maybe you would learn some knowledge. You might get some information. But it wouldn't minister to your heart. God knows where we all are. God knows our hearts. He knows, he knows how to reach us. And so if I'm trying to minister to everyone in this room with the words that I'm speaking, I could prepare my whole life for one message and not be able to to minister to one of you, let alone to everyone in this room with one message, everyone who's going to watch online. But if I just let the Holy Spirit flow through me and speak through me, he can take these words that I'm saying and he can take it right to your heart and he can minister the love of God. He can minister the, the, the healing power of God. He can minister the life of God to you right where you are right now. He can minister to you with these words that I'm speaking even though I haven't gone to seminary and gotten my doctorate in theology, even though I haven't, I haven't taken all kinds of classes on public speaking and all these kinds of things. Those are all good things to do. Nothing wrong with that. But if I don't have the Holy Spirit it's going to be dry. It's going to be powerless. It's going to be ineffective. It won't reach you where you are. And in the same way, it doesn't matter what your calling or purpose on life is, the Holy Spirit wants to flow through you. He wants to be the one empowering you. He wants to be the one giving you favor at your workplace, promoting you. He wants to give you all kinds of new ideas, all kinds of like innovation, you know, things that make you think, you know what, I could do this. I could start my own company. I could go do that, you know, and just, and just, make you believe in yourself because God believes in you so why shouldn't you believe in yourself if God believes in you why don't you believe in yourself right he want, he's the one who wants to do it through you if we just let him and so that's what I really want to um, encourage everyone here with that's what I want to conclude with today is that you know, if you're here today and you don't, you don't uh, know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, if you haven't been born again, if you haven't, if, you know, if you don't know God as Father, if you just know him as the God of the Bible, but you don't know God as Father, and you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you know, I, we want to pray with you. Or if you're not sure, if you're kind of thinking, well, I don't know, I mean, I might be, I might not be, I'm not really 100% sure. You know, you don't have to leave here today questioning, you don't have to leave here today wondering. We can pray with you and you can know without a shadow of a doubt that Jesus is your Lord and your Savior, that you can call upon God as Father and you don't have to, you know, go one more day not knowing, not knowing this. Romans 10 verse 9 says, If you shall confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. And then verse 10 says, For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. That's, it's as simple as that. Confess the Lord Jesus with, with your mouth, that he is your Lord. Believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead. It's not a big thing. You know, we saw this morning, Pastor Paul prayed for three people up here. All three of them were touched. All three of them were healed. Was Pastor Paul making this grand demonstration, this, this big drama out of it? No. It was a very, he was there, he, he ministered to them, he prayed for them. It doesn't have to be some big show. It's a very simple thing. It's a very, it's a very, it doesn't have to be dramatic. It doesn't have to be just as simple as confessing Jesus with your Lord, as your Lord and believing in your heart. I want you all to, to stand to stand with me if you can. If there's anyone here today that doesn't know for certain that Jesus is your Lord, if you don't know, if you're questioning, am I born again? You don't know God as Father. I want to invite you to come forward. I want to invite you to come right up here to the front. And we want to pray with you. If there's anyone here, if you're up in the balconies, if you're down here below, if you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, come to the front. We want to pray with you. But in the same way, too, if you, do, if you haven't received the Holy Spirit, if you have never received the Holy Spirit in your life, that's the first, that's the first step. That's the first step. You know, if you, you can't walk a kilometer if you haven't walked, taken that first step. In order to walk the kilometer, you have to take that first step. 
it is only the first step. There's more to it than that. But if you haven't done the first step, you can't do the next step. So if you haven't, if you haven't received the Holy Spirit, if you, if you don't, if you don't, have, if you're not sure if you received it, if you, haven't, if you haven't received it, again, we want to pray with you. You don't have to leave here today wondering if you have received the Holy Spirit or not. You can right now start hearing the voice of God and have God telling you what your plan is, what your purpose is for your life. Having the Holy Spirit operating in you, operating through you, letting, letting him do the work. You know, Jesus says, come to me, all ye who are burdened and heavy laden. For I will give you rest. My yoke is light. My burden is easy. 